What's up YouTube, it's LEGO King 71 and in today's video I'm going to be showing my massive army of LEGO Knights from various LEGO Castle factions, including the Raven Knights faction, the Crown Knights, the Dragon Knights, the Black Falcon Knights, the Wolf Pack, and so many more, consisting of about 200 minifigures. Let's start with one of my favorite castle factions, the dark blue colored crown knights from the 2007 LEGO castle theme. All of these knights come from sets I collected as a kid. In total, there are 12 knights in my collection from this faction, including 5 archers, 6 swordsmen with small shields, and 2 spearmen with large shields. The spearmen have these really awesome looking alternate printing on their torso that I really love. Of course though, the dark blue chainmail torsos look great as well. If you're familiar with this era of LEGO Castle, you'll probably notice that I added this silver metallic shoulder armor to all of the infantry knights which I think makes them look even cooler than the original minifigures. This piece wasn't even invented when these knights first came out, but I think they make a great addition. You'll see in the rest of this video that I customize all of the LEGO Castle factions to try to make them as awesome looking as possible and make them more my own. Let's move on to an evil faction of knights, the Fright Knights. This army consists of 9 Basil the Batlord minifigures from series 25 of LEGO collectible minifigures. You can see that these minifigures are mostly unchanged aside from the axe which I replaced with black longswords and the helmets which I customized with 8 different variations of black. In my LEGO fantasy lore, the vampire lord of the Fright Knights drank the blood of the best warriors from kingdoms all across the world in order to gain their skills and make them into immortal vampires for his army. I think the 8 variations of helmet do a great job representing the different cultures that each of these warriors came from. The vampire lord himself wields a dark magic staff instead of a long sword. I really love his helmet and the capes for all these figures are really cool too. Lego really packed a ton of detail in this minifigure. You can see that the feet are not only printed but they're also dual molded and even the arms have printing. In addition to the Vampire Lord, the Fright Knights are also led by the Headless Horseman. I tried to give him a sophisticated and well-dressed look similar to the way he's often depicted in popular artwork. Next, let's take a look at another evil faction, the Mountain Orcs. The Mountain Orcs are characterized by their sand green skin, their animal hide shoulder pads, and their signature low-cut mohawks. This faction's army consists of 9 infantry, 2 elite guards, 5 archers, and the Mountain Orc leader. All of the infantry orcs have large orc swords and shields. Their shields are decorated with skulls with dark red accents which you may notice is a trend with my orc and goblin factions. Fans of the Lego Ninjago theme will recognize this figure as Mo, but I think with the accessories I've added he really fits well into the medieval fantasy theme. The printing on this figure's legs and torso look really great and the face printing also closely resembles the face printing of the mountain orc archers which came from the 2008 Lego castle theme. They also have a similar sand green skin tone so I thought they complemented each other nicely. The orc archers take advantage of their immense strength by using large longbows capable of shooting arrows straight through enemy armor at great distances. The mountain orc leader has a special curved sickle and a golden hook to replace the hand he lost in battle. A close relative of the mountain orcs are the olive green skinned plains goblins. They have massive teeth protruding from their lower jaw that are capable of ripping the flesh of their enemies. The plains goblin archers have dark red neck bandanas. If you saw my LEGO Castle Mock building series, you might have noticed that I built a goblin trading ship in that mock for these figures. As I mentioned with the mountain orcs, the dark red accents are shared among the goblin and orc factions. Besides the bandanas, the red accents appear on the shields and their armor printing. The infantry soldiers of the plains goblins are equipped with large orc swords just like the mountain orcs. You'll notice that the skulls found on the banner and the shields of the Plains Goblins closely resemble the skulls of the Plains Goblins themselves. I love how their massive jaws are very clearly depicted in the artwork and I think the small details like this really make customizing these figures so much fun. The shields and the flags come from the 2008 LEGO Castle theme that I mentioned before, but the goblins themselves come from the LEGO CMF Series 24. You'll notice that I customized them though by removing their capes, adding spiked shoulder armor, and replacing the weapons that came with the figure. In total, there are 8 Plains Goblins in my collection, and I hope I can add even more in the future. Back to the human factions, let's take a look at another castle faction I used in my latest castle mock, the Green Dragon Knights. The dark green color that represents this faction makes them one of my favorite. In this army, there are 12 infantry soldiers consisting of 4 spearmen, 6 swordsmen, and 2 elite guards. 
The elite guards have this really great torso and leg printing and are equipped with large battle axes, while the normal infantry have these really great looking green torso prints. There are also 10 archers and one dragon rider. All of these knights are equipped with titanium metallic armor, helmets, and weapons. My favorite soldiers in this faction are by far the archers. Their chainmail printing and the dark green accents look really awesome to me. I also have a king, a queen, a princess, and a wizard minifigure for this faction. The arch nemesis of the Green Dragon Knights is the other faction from the 2010 LEGO Kingdoms theme, the Red Lion Knights. This army is equipped with silver metallic weapons and armor and consists of five swordsmen, two spearmen, one elite guard, and five archers. The Lion Knight swordsmen mirror the Dragon Knight swordsmen very closely, and the spearmen are equipped with a large shield, a cape, and a slightly different variation of shoulder armor. For this faction's royal family, I designed a prince and a princess minifigure in addition to the king and queen. The next faction is one of the newest additions to my collection, the Raven Knights. These knights are based on the Tournament Knight from Series 20 of the LEGO collectible minifigures. This is one of the most rare LEGO Castle minifigures there is, which also means it's one of the most expensive. But this didn't stop me from buying some stickers for the torsos and shields and creating my own custom version of this awesome looking castle faction. In my Raven Knights army, there are 11 swordsmen, 7 archers, a general, and a warrior princess. The infantry is heavily equipped with titanium metallic shoulder armor, helmets, and swords. The archers have spiked shoulder armor and are equipped with these awesome looking black bows and quivers. The general commanding this faction has a very awesome dark red plume protruding from his helmet. I tried to incorporate the dark red accents for this faction in some creative ways like the dual molded arm on the general, the cape, and even the warrior princess's hair. All of the minifigures in this faction also have dark red gloves and belts. One thing you may have noticed with this faction that makes it different from all the other human factions I've shown you so far is the skin tone of these minifigures. The reason I decided to use a realistic flesh tone for this faction instead of the standard brick yellow is simply because I thought the standard brick yellow clashed too much with the flame yellowish orange that's used for this faction's color scheme. Another castle faction I added to my collection recently is the Wolf Pack. This faction is based on the classic Wolf Pack faction from 1992. This ragtag faction is not as well equipped as the other armies I've shown you. The old dark gray colored armor and weapons are far less shiny and fancy than the other factions, but the true strength of the wolf pack lies in their ingenuity and underhanded tactics. Many of the members of the wolf pack also have large brown cloaks perfect for smuggling weapons and contraband throughout the kingdoms. Again, for these minifigures I utilize some awesome looking stickers for the torsos and shields. In total, there are nine members of this faction, including three crossbowmen, two swordsmen, five smugglers, and the wolfpack leader. I really love the mix of dark gray, brown, red, and black accents for this faction. Close cousins of the wolfpack are the Bull Knights faction, which I based on the Knights Kingdom Castle theme from the year 2000. My favorite feature of this faction are their brown colored battle axes. The brown and old dark gray colors are less extravagant than the other factions, but they are feared mercenaries throughout the kingdom and their loyalty lies with the highest bidder. They are all equipped with black armor and helmets similar to the next faction we'll look at. The largest army in my collection is the Black Falcon Knights. You can see I based this faction off the 1984 castle theme. I'm still using the classic black for the legs, arms, armor, and weapons as opposed to the more modern version of the knights from this castle faction, which instead use titanium metallic instead of the black. My collection of black falcon knights consists of 14 swordsmen, 5 spearmen, 2 axemen, 4 elite swordsmen, 12 archers, and 3 rangers. The swordsmen are all equipped with small shields and long swords. The spearmen, on the other hand, have large round shields. But my favorite soldiers in this faction are the archers and rangers. All of them wear black masks in addition to their black weapons and helmets. The rangers also have short swords and dark blue cloaks. They are extremely skilled in combat and prefer to move swiftly without being hindered by heavy helmets. The leader of this faction is the Black Falcon Queen. Moving on to a totally custom faction that I created, the Dark Forestmen are a small group that reside deep within the forest. They wear brown armor and cloaks that allow them to blend in with the bark and leaves of the trees in the forest. They are all expert longbow archers and are equipped with razor sharp daggers for close range combat. They are especially skilled at tracking their prey undetected, whether it be enemy soldiers or animals for survival in the forest. 
There are six members of this faction in my collection, and I think they make a really great addition to the other castle themes. Another custom faction I created is the Countryside Militia. The militiamen in this faction have some lightweight armor printed on their torsos. They're responsible for protecting the local villagers in times of emergency. I think the silver metallic equipment that they have really complements the silver armor that's printed on the torsos, and the dark brown legs provide a great contrast with the tan torso and the sand blue arms that they have. These militiamen are well funded from the villagers' tax money, which explains their shiny silver metallic equipment. Last but not least, as kind of a bonus, I wanted to show my collection of Castle Villager minifigures. To me, these minifigures are just as important as the knights when it comes to bringing any LEGO castle build to life. Here's a look at the minifigures I used in my most recent Green Dragon Knights castle mod. You can also see that I've got a variety of other villager minifigures that I think fit well with other castle factions. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your favorite castle army was in the comments section below. I might even decide to use it in my next LEGO castle mock that I'm going to start building this summer. As always, thanks so much for watching, and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you're looking forward to more videos. See ya!